Hi, we're Costa Barres and today we're at Parque Warner Madrid for the first time. Yeah, it's quite exciting because this is the first park we've actually come together or in general to a European park and Parque Warner is quite a big one to start with. It's got a massive park with loads of DC themed rides, which again is a rarity because in the UK they're all just random rides, which do have their own theming to be fair, yep. which is quite good. But it's been a bit exciting, although you've been to theme parks abroad in general. Well, yeah, I've I, been I to haven't. Disney Florida. That was a while ago. Yeah, when you were a little sprog, a little yeah. youngie. <laughs> but either way, it's going to be a decent place here because we've got plenty of rides, it's already bustling busy. Plenty of school trips, which is one of the weird things, but you cannot avoid school trips when you come in abroad or any park in general, so we kind of screwed out with it. You know, we'll, we'll get with it, we'll get with it. Anyway, we don't know what course they're riding at first because, as per... We don't know what's open! A few moments later... A few coasters are down, which is a slight issue. Obviously, Coaster Express is down and Stuntfall is currently non-operational, which hopefully will open later. But we have decided to go on... Batman Gotham City Escape, which is the LSM Steel Launch Coaster by Interman, which opened on the 13th of May 2023, so relatively new. And we're really, really looking forward to going on it. Look at that beauty. I have to say as well, this is like one of those things where we've not been on any roller coasters in... Five months? Yeah, since November, fireworks at Alton Towers. Yeah, so it's going to be one of those situations where the stomachs are going to be a bit more sensitive, at least on me. I know you're, you? yeah, you're, you're more of like a hardcore enthusiast, you can take it. For me, I'm going to like, belly's going to drop out of my legs. <laughs> Which is why I'm glad we had time like Stuntfall or Drop Tower. I want to be weaned into it a bit. I don't. Yeah. Bigger the better, me. Yeah, hey, Gotham City Escape is still part of it. <laughs> but yeah, it's got what, four inversions? It has. Pretty beefy, top speed of over 66 miles per hour. Or around there roughly? Yeah, it's 104 kilometers per hour, you do the conversion. I'm bad at math because you're stupid. On the way in, the waiting time's not too bad. We're on 20 minutes right now for Gotham City Escape. And the beautiful thing's just flying around the park. This is a thing of beauty for sure. A few minutes later. In the queue line for 12 minutes and now the coaster has ceased operation. So he said 20 minutes, it was nowhere near going to be a 20 minutes based on where in the outside queue right now. But we've got no idea how long it's going to be. Hopefully it'll be soon. Yeah. It is very hot today and we're standing outside. Yeah, and we're in black. Well, you're in grey and black. I'm just wearing full black. Yeah, it's not the greatest colour choice yeah. for a hot day. We're trying to fit the Batman theme. Does it come in black? All right, that took almost an hour. We did have half an hour of downtime, operation cease, but we're finally in. We're in Wayne Manor. We're going for the pre-show part of it. It's a bit of an overestimation and we're going the wrong way, apparently, as well. <laughs> Murciélago, parece que son tus amigos los que van a caer. Tomo el control, vamos. Agárrense fuerte, manténganse alerta, estamos casi a salvo. Piloto automático dañado, reduciendo navegación al 20%. Les sacaremos de aquí, máxima velocidad. ¡Mira hacia arriba! ¡Tenemos visitantes! ¡Vamos! Perdón por el lío. Uy, 
city have just come off Batman Gotham City Escape and it was absolutely incredible. Best one of the best rides to like go on straight after having like a few months off. A few months off, like five months and a one hour wait in the queue, but it was more than worth it. It's so good. I personally I was actually surprised at the start by the launches because I was not it's expecting. Yeah, I didn't realise it was coming. Yeah, I thought we were gonna go out and up a small lift hill and then get more launches, but just like I it launches out of the gate. So I was looking forward like this, watching Joker up top his little animatronic, and out of nowhere, poof. <laughs> <laughs> Straight head on the back, it's like saw, you're getting a concussion all over again. I was expecting it, but it still kind of uh, just takes you by surprise actually because of how quick it is. It's just brilliant. All three launches were really good. They, were all, they all had some right, you know, punch to them. Nice and punchy launches. And the drop after the top hat, so amazing. The like, just the air time that you get from that. It's so good. I can't even explain how brilliant it is. Like you literally, your butt is off the seat. You are hanging out of it. And it just like, it, it just feels like you're dropping for ages and it's not even that tall of a top hat. No, it isn't. a lot of things, but yeah, it's, it's so good. And then the uh, zero G stall, when you're upside down and it's going so slow is just out of this world. You get about three or four seconds. At least it feels longer than yeah, that. It really of does. pure hang time. It's, yeah. So it's just brilliant. One of those rides you really need to experience if you haven't, so good. And we were on the back row, which is probably important to say because launch coasters can be quite iffy like that. Some people yeah. prefer them on the front for a more intense launch and some people further back, especially on coasters like Stealth at Fort Park where you get dragged over the top hat. So it really depends, but we are going to try the front row for our next yeah, ride. Yeah, we're going to hopefully get some front row like later on just to see what it's like, but we usually prefer the back row on most row coasters that we've been on, but we'll see. Usually, it's like Rita. Rita, the launch is so strong, we prefer the front, yeah. but there's no dragging over the top elements. That's why we like the front so much. Exactly, on Stealth, we prefer the back. And Icon's the launch coaster, but we prefer the back because yes. again, you get more intense drags over it, so it's way better. So we decided to have a look around the shop for Gotham City Escape. Oh look, there's our video on the screen. Yeah, it's a bit of an interesting little scheme they've got going on there. Essentially, when you buy your video, it displays in the shop for everyone to see until someone else buys their video, which is uh, interesting to say the least. But they uh, have a quite a large supply of merchandise for Gotham City Escape in here compared to the other stores. They do. Uh, the rest of the stores are more sort of DC related, you know, like generic Superman or Wonder Woman, Bugs et Bunny. Yeah. Even. It's just Warner Bros in general. Yeah, Warner Brothers in general, rather than like specific ride merch. Like, for example, in this shop, you have your Batman Gotham City Escape merch. The only problem with it is that most of it is printed rather than embroidered. And you know how I like embroidered hoodies. I did love the mug, however. The mug is gorgeous. It was embossed and everything. It was beautiful. The hat looks good too. I it think, does. I think that looked more embroidered. Uh, they also did have some Parquet Warner specific t-shirts and hoodies at a shop at the beginning of uh, Parquet Warner as well. They do, so if you want to rock the Parquet Warner logo, you've got the ability to do so. After that amazing thrill ride, we decided to go now with our second coaster, which is Shadows of Arkham, a classic BNM invert. Only a five minute wait, which yeah. is practically walk on. It's pretty decent, it's a walk on. At least it's usually a walk on everywhere else in the world, like Alton Towers, but we've got no idea if it's a walk on here, but we'll soon find out. Quite honestly, the queue, I think that one's quite empty. Unless it's like five miles long, we're in for like an empty queue right here, which is nice. Welcome to Arkham Funhouse which is like a callback to Arkham Asylum. Because as you said before, this ride once was called Arkham Asylum. It was in 2017 when they added uh, virtual headsets. Just like Alton Towers and Galactica, it didn't last very long. I don't think the uh, virtual headsets on a roller coaster really took off. Um, and it, it's actually been renamed three times because originally it was Batman La Fuga when it opened in 2002. And it had to be renamed again, which is the Shadows of Arkham, which it is now in 2023 due to the opening of Batman. Gotham City Escape! And of course, Arkham Asylum was based on the video game series, which fits with the VR, so it makes the most sense. I assume this is the entrance. This is a really cool entrance. We've got a test seat over here. We've got a nice, like, prison office with more in CCTV. Oh, there's alarms as well. <laughs> That's pretty cool, to be fair. We've got broken prison gates here, which is obviously evidence of someone escaping. Come for fun. So if no one's played the Arkham Asylum video games, the entire essence of it is you going into Arkham Asylum as Batman to essentially apprehend Joker who's broken loose and got all the convicts out. So this is a pretty cool thing to see because it's definitely like related to the video game. This is eerie because this is empty in here. <laughs> when you, so you'd expect everyone to be full clearly, that's what it's supposed to be like, but it's empty so it's like walking through a museum. Everyone's at the Batman City Escape, clearly. And you can hear the roar of that B&M coaster from here. 
question is, will it be better than Nemesis or Nemesis Reborn? That is the question. Uh, are we going the right way? Yes, it's this way. Right, yeah. So you walk into dead ends. My sense of direction is horrible. Ooh, we've got some, like, neon effect in here. What graffiti? Yeah, graffiti with neon paint. Ooh, that's pretty cool. And we're at some Q gates. Clearly, this is obviously, again, designed for this place is ram-packed. During the summer? Yeah, during the summer. Oh, like it probably was like four days ago in the park, was having some busy days. Oh, come on, someone's graffitied the air conditioning unit. That's how you know there's been some long queues in this place. You see the air gates, and guess what? It's absolutely empty. Now, isn't that a familiar sight? Looks just like Nemesis Reborn, Nemesis, and Nemesis Inferno 4. And yes, we are well aware that Nemesis and Nemesis Reborn are the same coaster, but technically they're not. They're not new. the same coaster. That's why I mentioned them separately. Uh, I think this is the entrance. Are we going in the wrong queue? just had three times on Shadows of Arkham. Yep, we decided to go back on. We got the back row and then we got the front row. So we've had the true experience now of front and back row. And it's a remarkable different experience each time, but not in any bad way. No, it's actually really good in both ways, depending on how you feel. So obviously at the front, it's more forceful because you're being pushed into all of the elements. Whereas on the back, you're being dragged into an element. So it's a lot more whippy from the back and more forceful from the front. So no matter which row you actually get on, you're going to have a good time with this. Because as Sarah said, each one is entirely different. I thought it was more forceful at the front, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. You get more, you get pulled into the elements. Therefore, I could feel my feet going numb at one point. Pushed. Pushed. Into pushed. the elements. Pushed. Pushed. But I could feel my feet going numb at one point, which was obviously the G-force of blood getting pushed to the other side of my body. While at the back, like you say, it was more whippy. You got more of a kick around, especially yeah, in the corkscrews. you dragged into it. Yeah, so you get thrown out like the edge of your seat in the uh, corkscrews, which is really good. But at 80 kilometers an hour, it's a pretty punchy roller coaster and it is better than Inferno. Yep. Can I come out on Nemesis? Because I've not tried it yet, but I will be late this week. But you, of course. Can. I have, but I haven't gone in the new Nemesis Reborn. We go on Thursday, though, so I can't wait. And we did go in the wrong queue, believe it or not. So yeah, we, we had to <laughs> walk back around. Yeah, believe it or not, it did actually say Fast Pass and we just ignored it. Or we, we just did, well, they didn't ignore it. It was more we just didn't notice it, which it's, makes it even worse. It's an exclusive, though. <laughs> so I, I wasn't paying attention because I was too busy filming. It's just potato <laughs> brain efforts, but. <laughs> You're an idiot. Here we are at Superman Attraction de Asiero. Sorry if that's the wrong pronunciation in Spanish, guys. Um, but in English, it means Superman Steel Attraction, which is a B&M flawless coaster. Which is something new for us. We've never been on a flawless coaster before. No, we haven't. So as far as my understanding, you can now see the track below your feet rather than the train car, which is something unique. The good thing about this is it's, yet again, a walk-on experience. So besides Gotham City Escape today, we've had a pretty chill time. Yes, yeah, so everything's been really quiet. It really has. And it's a beautiful station again. You've got the Daily Planet we're walking into right now. You've got these little uh, news paper carts over here delivering the news to the New Yorkers. In the oh yeah, Superman. In the I just realised why I said New Yorkers. Sure, you know what Superman in ages is Metropolis. So Such yeah, horrendous people. Horrendous. horrendous. It's not horrendous. I've watched Superman in years. That's not true. I watch Henry Cavill quite a lot. That's just Henry Cavill's Henry Cavill. Yeah. We love Henry That's Cavill. That's different. <laughs> I, I love him too much. What? I thought it was, uh, what's his face that you like? Nick, what is it? Who? In, oh, the one, the dodgy one from the film. The Flash? The Flash, yeah. Uh, Brandon Roth. Gage. Brandon Roth. No, it's Nicholas oh, Gage. Yeah. Brandon, Brandon oh, Roth was the one. Brandon Roth was the one. I actually yeah. like Brandon Roth as Superman. It was, it was the uh, cameo by Nicholas Cage that disturbed the heck out of me. Hey. Nicolas Cage is the best Superman. Definitely not. Best Henry, Superman. Henry Cavill. The Henry Cavill's good, but... No, no. Nicolas Henry, Cage, Henry Cavill. flowing locks. Ooh. The station building's got, it's got all the clocks up there for the different times around the world, which, of course, every news agency needs. We've also got all the desks. I would say this is Superman's desk, but every single one has got Superman in there. Hold up. Is that the master? <laughs> Good sports there, look a bit terrified, but you know, there's been good sports about it. <laughs> this is going to be a beast, it is 50 meters tall at its peak, it goes 100 kilometers per hour at its top speed. And, and it's it got seven inversions! Seven inversions! 
It's, uh, yeah, it sounds... It's still not as much as Smiler in the UK, though, like no, no, 14. No, no. Like, Smiler is the king of inversions, like, never going to be top. It is, world record holder. Is still, this? after all this time. Yeah, exactly. Ten years plus. Yep. It's still going, it's still going. This one's going to be intense, but for Superman, it should be nothing less. Exactly. So we've just come off Superman, the attraction of steel. We tried it twice. There's actually a walk-on feature here where you can actually re-ride about it to walk around. It seems like you can ask the staff, though we didn't try this because we wanted the front row. Only if there's no one in the queue, though. Yeah, naturally, because we did uh, start on the back, which was an amazing experience there. But then we also tried the front, which is why we decided to walk back around and do it again before actually filming our impressions. As there was already people in the There front. was already people there, so we yeah. thought, why not? <laughs> Regardless, this is one of those coasters that's fairly awesome the entire way through. There's not many standouts, really, besides the initial drop. Yep. Which is kind of a fake out because initially when you come out of it, it drops and it drops again. And it's really at the back row we started first, we did not see that. So it's fine. Oop, we're dropping, then no, we're back on, then we're dropping again. And it's quite steep as well because it's like 160 odd feet, fairly similar yeah, to Oblivion, just a bit shorter. Yeah. But when you're on the front row, you really experience that depth and that drop. Yeah, which actually makes it a lot better when you're like sort of free falling a little bit down the first drop which is probably the, my favorite bit but the, there's seven inversions that you can really feel them quite a lot but on the front if it's a sunny day the sun is in your eyes constantly so you're having to squint um and the wind there's a lot of wind on that ride there is so uh you had to be careful of your contacts yeah i had to on the front row i had to close my eyes for the most intense parts and i just squint because i was afraid it was going to blow my contacts out it was that forceful on the face and it also knocked your uh, hair out as well. It like, did. That's how intense it is. It's been all day so far and we still haven't eaten, as per in usual theme parks. Yeah, we usually don't eat all we nah, get all the time. Usually we just wait until afterwards to get about McDonald's. That's usually what happens. But there's a few around here and we thought we'd try some local cuisine. Uh, and we're going to Foster's Hollywood. I suppose that's local cuisine. It's like a chain. We saw it's, it in a mall. But except it says American restaurant. But anyway. It counts, damn it. It's in this country and it's not in the UK, I don't think. Maybe it's in America. It counts. Let's see what we can get in there. So it's food time. We've both gone for slightly different meals. Sarah's got some Baked very rigatoni. delicious looking pasta dish. What is it again? Baked rigatoni. Baked rigatoni. It's also massive. Look at the size of this Look at the portion, portion size. Look how it's thick that is. Huge. It's thick and voluptuous. That is a massive size of pasta. Basically a very cheesy pepperoni, chili con carne mix from the looks of things. Can't wait. Which looks, looks delicious. And I got this random cheese and chips smash burger combination essentially it's beef at the bottom that they've squashed down like two bee burgers with cheese in it then they put cheese and chips on top and then brioche bun looks beautiful the portion size is just a bit different i've got like less chips here but you know i'll, I'll take it i'll take it uh and of course the singular coke as always because when it's a refillable drink why buy two well food was absolutely amazing i'm absolutely stuffed my pasta was incredible definitely it, recommend it was definitely a big portion it was huge i actually managed to eat most well pretty much all of it actually so go me <laughs> and uh, that burger was quite delicious uh, i'm not sure what sauce it was you thought it was blue cheese yeah i think it's blue cheese either way the burger was gorgeous it was absolutely delicious and but... uh, up now we've got the most intense ride off the trip yeah we have because naturally after food we need to go something like a top spin right yeah definitely definitely let's, definitely let's top, on, top spin let's, yeah let's go like, on invertitron let's go on lex luthor's invertitron we'll be fine <laughs> no we're actually going on something called cinetor which is like a little car thing and then we we're going to go on the madhouse which was embajuados or something like that don't attack me for my spanish i'm not spanish i'm barely even english that's some great driving though, Sarah. You've gone all the way to LA. I know, I'm fabulous. I did it, uh, you know, rather uh, like real life. This, me driving you, sat doing nothing in the parking with you. No, not really. You're usually you're the one that's, you know, sat there driving in rides and I'm the one driving in real life. Definitely not. He doesn't have a driving license. I do, I do. I, I legally have a driving license. It's called license. a professional. He's not allowed to legally drive without a legal driver in the front seat. No, it counts. No. 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 So I think you might need some oil. Just a bit. Oh, my the Redwoods. That's close by the feet of Redwoods. Yeah, well, usually they're a lot taller than that if you see them in real life. 
He's only got the base of it. Though they are that wide. <laughs> he was waving to us on camera. The only thing is, I waved my camera hands <laughs> out. In my design as a kid's ride, but it is definitely the most bland ride we've like ever rode on, pretty much. But hey, it's good for your stomach. And good if you've got kids. Hotel Embrujado. Pronounce it wrong, most likely. Probably. Six minutes. Another walk on. Every single ride today has been a walk on, besides. Ah, yes. Entrada exclusiva. That means. Exclusive exclusivity it means we're not allowed in the entrance. <laughs> well, you are if you have a fast pass. Well, we are allowed in there if we've got a fast pass, which we do not, because buying a fast pass on any day when it's a weekday is usually a bad idea. What, to, what was your impressions of your first ever Pacoma Madhouse? It was very trippy. I'll say how much at least. I almost got my phone crushed initially because it was in my pocket. Yeah, you didn't realise the bar came down. Well, I did, but I didn't realise it came down that far up. And I got the corner seat as well, so it was right on the phone. And I was like, I just panic to get my phone out of this pocket, basically. It was, uh, it was a close one, but yeah, it was very trippy. It felt like you were getting pushed back and then pushed forward, and then you felt like you were almost going upside down as the room was. And at first I was saying to you, yeah, but the doors, that's what we came for, those doors, so yeah, how are they moving? He actually thought that um, <laughs> we were going to be going upside down at one point, which you kind of are, but not really. That's why it is trippy. It is. That's why it's called a madhouse. It's very true. So that means, uh, like you say, I'll enjoy Hex a lot more in Alton Towers when it finally comes back this season. Yes, because obviously with us being in Parque Juana Madrid, everything's in Spanish, so you can kind of get the gist of what's going on. But it's always easier understanding the storyline when it's in your native language, of course. Much easier, because I couldn't understand anything besides Cabrón, and that's about it. So. But you can still enjoy the ride. Oh, you did. I was, I was focusing more on the experience of the ride. But another dark ride up next, and that is Scooby Doo! -doo. <laughs> Well, it's almost seven o'clock and we decided to ride Gotham City Escape again. We were gonna go for the water rides and Scooby-Doo and stuff, but we walked past it, shop you, thought, why not? We got the front row this time. Luckily. Luckily. <laughs> I tried asking the dude in there and I was like, can we go front row? Well, I noticed that two people in front of us had gone to rows three and four, so I was like, damn it, I'm getting the front row. <laughs> yeah, Sarah just bolted there. Meanwhile, the guy working here was just like, I don't understand you. And I was, I was like, front, front, please. Pop a more front. Whereas I was already standing in the front. Yeah, so she's a bit behind. Yeah, she already took it. She claimed it for us both. <laughs> but it could be the fact that it's almost 7 pm. It's warmed up a bit. It's been running for like six, seven hours now. But the intensity of those launches, which is probably more normal for the front of the ride anyway, were. In yeah, generally, it's crazy. A, generally a launch coaster at the front makes it a lot more intense. Um, for the launches themselves, but all the other elements on that ride from the front was just so much better. Like the top hat? Like the top hat, where you just literally just, you're sitting at the top, just sitting there looking down and it's just sat there, it's just amazing. So yeah. slow over the top. And then it feels almost like you've, the ride has stopped while you're on the top hat, and mm -hmm. then you just start to fall down and it's just incredible. It's out of this world, really. It really is. You're literally on the 45 meter top hat and as it goes over and crests the top hat, you're pointing down over the inverted drop and yep. because you're on the front whether you've got especially if you've got your hands in the air or you're not holding on it feels like you're going to fall forward out of the train onto the track which is an amazing weird feeling but so good so good i suppose we'll be scared of that but that was just like you know you're safe but even way it just feels like oh god that's I, weird. I, I don't personally find it scary but i can see why people would exactly um, but just an intense amazing experience and one that i'm so glad we did the final one was the actual stall above us that stall zero g stall was even better on and it's about to go over there now actually to be fair there it goes that again your bum was off the seat felt like you were falling out but it's it right Right, 
right, we just got off Gotham City Escape for the third time today. This time, we just decided to go on it and we jumped on the middle row. Yep. Which row. was still good, it was still awesome. It's a pretty awesome course no matter where you are. I think we can safely say that the front row is our favourite though. By, by, by far. But Followed by the back. The back, yeah, the back's always good, but the front on that is, oh, it's intense. But we did meet a couple in the queue who recognised we're from the UK because of the icon hoodies. Shout out to Louise. Shout out to Louise and the partner. But we actually found out through them that Stunfall is open. It's so open. That's where we're going. Yay! Because we didn't think it was going to be open today, but apparently it's open, so we're going to try and make our way there now. And, you know, crep. There we go. We've got a Riddler. A Riddler. Props. And we've got a Penguin. Props. There they are. <laughs> This is a couple who told us Stuntfall is potentially open. We got our front row riders. Right. How awesome. did you enjoy it? And yeah. we loved it. This is so good. And we feel like it was the roller coaster juju from these lovely pair yeah, that yeah. got us our front yeah. row ride. Yeah, it worked out really, really well. So thank you so much. No guys. problem. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. Glad you yeah. enjoyed it. Go to um, Stuntfall. We're going we are. We're going there now. Thank you. Yeah. See you. See you later. Bye. Bye. I mean, we've arrived here at Stuntfall. We don't know if it's open or not. It seems to be dead, but it says five minutes on the queue time, but the course seems dead. There's either not enough capacity or it's not open and I've actually not adjusted their things yet. I've just spent the last five minutes trying to explain the giant inverted boomerang to Steve and he still doesn't quite get it. I understand it. You get pulled up one of those, you get pulled up one of these arms and then you get dropped off forward, face down. You go through the loop, you go up this, all the way through there, back through, and you somehow get pulled up go up that one backwards, right? No, that one you got forwards, this one you... Either way, you go forwards on one and backwards on the other. Yes, exactly. We just came off Stuntfall, that beautiful machine behind us right there between our heads. And that was an interesting experience to be on one of the tallest rides, off, not the tallest ride in the park, but 190 plus feet if I'm remembering right. Yeah. And it drops you at like 105 kilometers per hour. Yep. And intense? Yeah, no, I really enjoyed that. Shout out again to Louise, thank you. That was such a good ride on that. It was a weird feeling because like we went uh, the row before the back mm -hmm. and like when you're being pulled up that sort of like 90 degree angle backwards like and you're trying to keep your feet because you're not supposed to put them on the uh seat in front no. you're having to like hold your feet so that but they keep wanting to slide forward because bearing in mind you're like facing the ground essentially while you're being pulled up there and then it holds you and uh because you can't see where you're going it gets all the way up to the top and just drops you straight away yeah there's which, no pause which is quite funny on the after you're you do your the course and then you go forwards up the lip like sort of chain lift as well and then you get held for a moment and then it drops you again it does yeah and once again you can't see anything so you don't know when it's gonna do it exactly so it's, it's really good though although weirdly enough i said to you when i got off the ride despite it being a 90 degree nearly 200 foot drop because we were on they like said 15 out of 16 rows and they're really close together those yep, two seats we chose those because 16 is actually separated yep. each second row seat on each car is basically separated and we chose not to go on that just yep. so we could sit together yep. and you were pretty much say 200 foot in the air almost mm -hmm. right a point Nearly, yeah. Nearly. You might as well round up. Yeah. All the best mathematicians round up. <laughs> only we, 10 meters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's only 10 meters. Yeah, it's less bit's feet, you know, so feet, you know, it's 9 feet, it works. <laughs> we decided uh, to go on that, and yeah, despite the fact the drop is so fast and so high, you don't, I, mean, I said I didn't get no bottomless feeling in my stomach, I didn't get no like free flow like a drop tower, it just felt smooth. It was so smooth. And I was like, at the top of that, I was like waiting for that drop, because I was like, this is going to make my stomach turn massively, because you so... 90 degree turn it feels like you're almost inverted but seeing as it was for coma we were kind of worried it was going to be a bit like infusion mm. from blackpool pleasure beach worst ride i've ever been on but it was so smooth so comfortable and uh yeah it was great it was it was smooth we hit yeah. our ears like once and that was it yeah that was it and uh yeah that it went through the inversion so quick we were it like does. over in like two minutes <laughs> more of the coma eyes need to be like that but we'll try it again tomorrow if we can if it's open on the front, front row yeah. just so we can see what it looks like on there because louise said it was pretty terrified on the front so yeah she did we want to try and see i can imagine it would be that high it would look quite daunting at least you've got machinery hiding it oh i don't mind height no yeah i mean all of us do like mind height too much but you know 
could be it could be a, like oblivion drop. It could be. It By could the be. way, he was terrified the first time he went on that. Oblivion? Yeah. Nah. You were terrified. Nah, it was Smiler. <laughs> oblivion, I was just a bit trepidatious. Exactly. Smiler was the one where I was like, oh no, I'm going to die. <laughs> this ride looks horrible. It looks horrible. It looks horrible. I'm going to stay with it, man. Well, we made our way off of Scooby Doo's Dark Ride. Which and was Steve's first time at a shooting Dark Ride. Yeah, I'm used to Dark Rides, but not those types. I thought we were just shooting things to activate. And I won, by the way. I won. 1,770. And what did you get, Steve? Just 630. Exactly. But that was not my fault. I thought we were shooting these things just to activate the attractions and make them pop out. Absolute fail. And conveniently, halfway through, you mentioned, oh, I've beaten you at your score, Steve. You just to... honestly, like, score? Up, honestly, honestly, score? <laughs> losers come up with excuses nope, all the time. Nope, nope. It's time for the night ride. Almost 10 past 8, we've got 15 minutes left. Race open. It's time to get on this beautiful thing in the night. No lo creo, murciélago. Parece que son tus amigos los que van a caer. Tomo el control. Vamos. Agárrense fuerte. Manténganse alerta. Estamos casi a salvo. Piloto automático dañado. Reduciendo navegación al 20%. Les sacaremos de aquí. Máxima velocidad. Mira hacia arriba. Tenemos visitantes. ¡Vamos! Perdón por el lío. And that is the end of our first day at Parque Juana Madrid. Yeah, it was quite eventful. We got back in the Gotham City Escape queue and then guess what? It was down again. So bad in fact that they all more said it wasn't going to open again, but we decided to stick it out. We did and they tried. They let us wait. Um, a lot of people left and there was enough for like maybe two trains. I think there was two people on the third train, but that was it. And they actually managed to get it working. They so did. yay, we got our night ride on the uh, Gotham City Escape. So. The engineers and operators Brilliant. did an amazing job to get it up. And yeah, apparently the night before this happened and they were here till about half past 10. Getting it working again, so yeah. Claps for them. Yeah, they're doing an amazing job. And we got the night ride wanted. And you've probably seen the video footage right now. It was just as amazing as usual. We got the back row again. So we couldn't have asked for a better seat. Yeah, it was brilliant. But tomorrow, we still need to get more rides. We've got more stuff we have missed. So. We do a lot of uh, inverter tron. We forgot about that earlier. Inverter tron because it closed <laughs> a few times, so we didn't get on it. And it was kind of empty at times. So like, wait, there's more people on it. More fun, you know. Uh, I think it'll be good either VIP way. VIP ride. I've not, not been on a top spin since Rips all closed, so I'm looking forward to that. Of course. Uh, I've never been on it, but you've told me amazing things. So my first top spin, so be awesome. Yeah, I can't uh, wait. Day two. Well, we're back for day two in the park, which will be straight into Gotham City Escape. It's quite a busy one at the start, but it's not too bad, to be quite honest. There's like 20 people in here. Uh, 20 minute queue, I should say, but either way, it's everyone in the park essentially rushed here besides a few people on the drop towers. But other than that, it's pretty, pretty decent. had our first ride of the day on Gotham City Escape and we luckily got the back row. We did, that was uh, extremely lucky. Extremely they just, lucky. They just needed two people and uh, here we go. Yep, the ride broke down once in the queue and then once on which we thought someone might have been sick or passed out. Yeah, because someone got escorted out so we're not really sure what happened um, but it like opened maybe five, ten minutes after that. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, we wonder if it was that but we about, don't know for sure. About a 50 minute wait in total which is a bit long but it broke down twice so I suppose it's first ride, everyone rushes towards it. It is, and it was quite busy, but we got on there. We got and it was a really good ride, so we're happy enough. But we're just going to do a few chill rides while everyone gets the roller coasters out of the systems, because you know Arkham is like 13 minutes, which is not bad to be fair. Then Superman's 30. So. Exactly. So up next is the way swinger, Mr. Freeze, Fabrica de Hielo. Yeah, it's just Mr. Freeze's swinger. Although it probably will cool you down, so it's actually quite accurate. And then we're going to go on Tom and Jerry's roller coaster, which, which is, is family coaster, family coaster, and Bit Bit, which is also a family coaster. Yep, might as well get all the coasters in while we can. Yep, some falls closed again, no surprise. But if we can get on there today, we will. So we'll see. Well, the wave swinger was nice, but we just saw Shadows of Arkham is nine minutes, so 
essentially a walk on. We decided why not go on it before we get on Tom and Jerry and Bit Bit. But yeah, the wave swinger was nice. It was, uh, it was a very chilled ride, which yeah. is quite good sometimes. It's always nice to get a chill ride. It cooled you down too in the heat. Yeah, but we kind of missed the water from the Chessington one. Yeah, Chessington has nice little squirts of water. Yeah, it was just, oh, it cooled you down so good. So it's like, pop of all, please, some look, water. Look, yeah, looking forward to the water ride later. Oh, yeah, the water ride. We're going to get this Shadows of Arkham out of the way because you can't turn down and be in there and watch a walk on. And then we'll obviously go to the family coasters. Again, we changed our mind. We had an awesome ride on the Shadows of Arkham on the fifth row this time. It was uh, very forceful. It was very good. forceful. We had some roller coaster newbies next to us, which is also, you know, it's always wholesome to see some new roller coaster. They enjoyed people. themselves. They so did. That's good. They were slightly fearful at the start, and then as soon as they got going, like, yeah, it's like a full-on Tom Scott moment. But you love, you love to see it. You love to see it, really. But because we don't know where we're going yet to get to these family rides, we're gonna go on Invertatron. This right here, Lex Luthor's Invertatron, which gotta is a top a, spin. Gotta love a host top spin. What's really cool about this ride is the signage coming into it as well, because even that has got a mini top spin kind of thing on the sign. It's absolutely brilliant. Invertatron twice and it's definitely made me miss Ripsaw in the UK all the more. Ripsaw, RIP. Hopefully we'll get another one. Alton Towers, please, please bring us back a Ripsaw 2. Well, that's because you said Ripsaw's got alternate cycles. This one seems to be the same on both. It, yeah, it was the same cycle twice. Uh, Ripsaw was a bit different in the fact that you could literally watch it in the queue line a few times and you never knew which way it was going to go when you went on it yourself. Uh, I remember when my first time going on Ripsaw and uh, I watched it in the queue time and it took it a, a similar way both times and then when I went on it, it took it completely opposite way, backwards over the water and then the water show up in your face and you can breathe for the rest of the ride. But it made it more unique and it was brilliant and I loved it. Exactly. I mean, I still really enjoyed it. Surprisingly, I thought it was going to be a bit of a sicker, you know, get your stomach well, rolling. for your but... first time? Yeah, for my first time, but it was actually really chill. I liked it. The only downside was we were getting cooked by the sun because yeah. the sun's at a two o'clock position. It was extremely warm and, and the sun was in your eyes, yeah, yeah, constantly. So we were getting cooked live. We're still quite warm now because it is a lot warmer today. It's about 26. So you're definitely feeling it and there's no cloud coverage today. So the heat is out. Yeah, it's boiling. And of course, I'm wearing black and so are you. <laughs> definitely black and grey. Well, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> Still got hoodies on because, you know, you got to be blending in with the locals, but <laughs> other than that, now we're we finally going to go. To uh, get the family coasters out of the way, yeah. hopefully, if, if we, we find can find them. them. Yeah, exactly. If we don't find them, we'll find something else, then we'll go on that, most likely. We'll be like, well, the coasters are later. <laughs> Either way, that was fun, so. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> well, we're in Cartoon Land now, the home of Cow Network, and loads of other cartoons, Warner Brothers and the lot. Exactly, there's loads, and here we are next to Tom and Jerry which kind of looks a bit like a bigger flying fish, but the trains are similar with 24 compartments. So you can fit quite a lot of people on it. And you can see clearly there's some orange juice you fly through. There's a big, massive piece of cake that the ants are going to attack. There's uh, cats up at the back. There's cats up at the back. There's also bananas. There's a molehill there for the ant hill. There's a salt shaker. It's a pretty interesting and layout. Pepper. And a pepper.
was a fun one. The back seat we chose, as always, and it was actually a good decision because it really whipped you over that first Yeah, rock. it was actually quite fast for a little, like, junior family coaster. Yeah. It was quite good. I mean, there's about 20 trains, give or take, on there, and right at the very back is whippy as hell, which is what you want. Yeah, exactly. Actually Especially for a, a coaster exciting, like that. Yeah. There's not a lot of room in there, though. It's quite cramped. It is very say. tight, I will say yeah. that. I, I was getting things poked in unspeakable places, and I was not very comfortable, but it was still a good coaster. You're not supposed to talk about that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And we're heading into the Old West Territory. We didn't actually get to come in here yesterday, but it's got the water rides, uh, as well as Coaster Express, which as you can see, there's a massive crane in the distance there. It is unfortunately closed, as we said earlier. But uh, it's a nice little themed area, in my opinion. Yeah, it looks good. Looks like the Old West. You've got a steampunk salon over there. Yeah, that Saloon. Thing to drum into that fountain there, no? Yeah, that fountain does look really inviting, to be fair. I'm actually getting splashed here from it. It's like so good. It's like, oh yeah, splashes with that water. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, oh. water. Yeah. <laughs> I really love how well themed the Wild West area is. Yeah, they've got outfitters, they've got a saloon, right? And the doors are actually like the swinging saloon doors, half of a door rather than the full ones. Probably yeah, really cool. You get the real cowboy feel like you're gonna walk in there and everyone just stares at you, but they were doing that anyway because, like, who are these people in our land? Well, yeah, with the GoPro out. Oh, yeah, especially with the GoPro, you're not inconspicuous at all. You just walk in there, everyone's just staring at you. So you really embrace the Wild West side right there. It's, it's what you call cosplaying. And then we walked through those saloon doors into, well, it was a bar, but then it led through into this cafeteria place. Yeah, it felt like being back at school, in a way. It's like, I went and had a look at the line, and there's a few cakes in there, there's normal food, there's like tomato and cheese pasta, there's classic hot dogs, and there's a lot of fruit there as well, which is something we noticed at the park. A lot of people are eating fruit, compared to the UK where everyone's eating chocolate bars and stuffing in between the fences of roller coasters. Yeah, they do do that a lot, don't they? Yeah, there were, there were a lot uh, more intelligent about our diets at times compared to us. I mean, I can't really talk, I eat way too much cakes. It's just one of those things. Like, it's, not, it's, it's interesting to see a different culture and how they prioritize fruit. Yeah, it is. And uh, I mean, the cafeteria is easy for people. You know, you just pick up a tray, pick whatever you want and then pay for it and take it out and sit wherever you want. And just to emphasize the lack of good food choices I have, we then found a candy shop a few doors down. I literally noticed this giant foamy banana in the window and was like oh my gosh look at this foamy banana i need that and then we walked in and bought loads of candies from the shop yeah and you know i'm a banana fiend so as soon as you mentioned that it was like we have to go in there now there's no question about it it's like i need my foam banana right next to rio bravo we found the breakdown so it doesn't look like it's operating but there's a person waiting and the gate's open so we'll soon find out if it is sarah loves these so we're gonna try that's all you can do but as a seat no waiting time so we'll find out just had a ride on Los Caras de la Mina, the breakdance, and it was really good. Um, the theming is great to this like Wild West themed area. Yeah, the theming is really on point with the Wild West. Like in the center of the breakdance, you can see a mining system going up with buckets, bringing the rocks up and then dropping them into another bucket. It's such a simple thing, but it really adds to the theme of the area, it makes the ride look like it's supposed to be here. And they also have like a minecart style in the middle of the spinning seats. Uh, and it's got like full of stones and rocks like you would find in a mine. Yeah, so it's pretty on point. This is like the thing Alton Towers needs to do with their rides. Exactly, you could fit it into any of their areas and just theme it to the area. Dark Forest might be a good one, actually. It really would, because getting some of these flat rides in there is good. But of course, you do want them to fit in. You don't want the breakdance style funk and fly ones in there where they're lighting up everything and just like standing out, really. They look good at night time, but they do stand out. That's because it's a retro squad. Yeah, retro squad. Yeah, yeah. But they're gone now, so rejoice, yeah. rejoice. They were fun, but they're gone. Now we can get something more themed for the area. And permanent. And permanent, yeah, because permanent means it's good. Anyway, I think at this point we're having to go on the drop tower since it's right in front of us over there, that big beautiful thing. If we get in combo mode or launch mode or just drop mode, we're not sure yet. It seems to be running combo slash normal throughout the day. And then we'll get on Superman. But we'll see what it's like. It'll be either this or Superman. Which one will it be? Well, it's time for the Enigma's Drop Tower. It's actually La Venganza de la Enigma. Yeah, but I don't speak Spanish. So it's the Enigma in English translation, his Drop Tower. It's actually the Revenge of the Enigma. Close enough, we are getting there. Or Enigma's We're getting there. Revenge. We're getting there. 
But this beefy tower, as you can see, has got three separate launches on it, but they're all different in each way. The two that are operating today is the standard combo, which is a raise all the way to the top, a sudden drop, and then as you get halfway down, you'll get launched back up again, drop, a bit of a launch, drop, etc. While the other one is the standard launch and drop, like Ice Blast at Blackpool, Pleasure Beach. Yep. That's the launch. Well, we've just come off Riddler's Enigma drop tower thingamajig. La Venganza. La Della Venganza, Migma. Della Migma. But either way, that is a beefy tower. It's actually 95 meters tall. You can see the top hat for Gotham City Escape there, which is 45 meters. And it's way more than double that. So that's why it's 95 meters tall, according to the Spanish Wikipedia. I and mean, you can believe it. And we converted it to feet, which is 311. Yeah, so you were 311 feet in the air. And you can tell because you can see the like Mojave type desert everywhere, all the park. The views from up there are absolutely stunning. Although we realise something else, the ride is not set as we said earlier. No, we actually think it's random. So you could basically, the tower we won, went on, we watched it and it was combo. But the one next to us was just a typical launch and they actually got a combo when we were sat down. So we were like, oh gosh, are we going to get a launch one? But we actually did get the combo, luckily. Yeah, because we were looking around and we were seeing question marks everywhere. And we're like, oh wait, is this going to be a random thing to keep me in anticipation? That's but, um, brilliant. But it also fits with the theme, Riddlers. Yeah, exactly, you don't know what you're going to get. And it exactly. really works because we were bracing for a launch. We were like, right, we do not know what we're getting here. Yeah, it could <laughs> so. be a launch, could be a drop, could be the combo. Don't know. Yeah, but anyway, we got the combo, which is still brilliant. It was a nice raise and it just dropped you nicely. Give you a nice launch, which as you said was... Really? Stronger. Well, yeah, yeah, stronger than Ice, Ice Blast. Blast by far, even though it was only going half the launch up. And we wanted the combo anyway, so great. Great, we got the boat. We might go it again there. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. We're off to Superman now. Yeah, Shadows of Arkham is in front of us, but we're going to resist. Superman, Superman. And then Superman. Water Ride. Water Ride, Rio Bravo. All right, we're at Rio Bravo, right here. The Water Ride, as I almost fall over. It's because we're in ninja shoes. Exactly. Looking forward to this, though, because it's really warm and I need to cool down. We do, we do, we're really warm. We're gonna go two rides on this, but yeah, we're in our ninja <laughs> shoes. People look giving us weird looks, so I assume this is not as wet on the floor as it might be, not like four. Yeah, but, yeah. but still, I don't want my new sketches getting wet, so here and we go. And I've got new Converse, so it's one of those things. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Let's test this out. Well, we've just come off Rio Bravo and... We've been there twice. We sucked. We're absolutely drenched. Yeah, the first time wasn't too bad. It was still a bit wet. The second time we have been, as you can tell by looking at us, soaking wet. Yes, we were on the back on the first time and then the front on the first time um, because there was barely any... Well, there was a couple and like a, a child on the back. Um, but I think because we, we got were at more the front, wet, surprisingly. Yeah, yeah, we were at the front. I think all the weight was on the front then because there was barely anyone at the back. I think yeah. that's what the problem was. Well, the theming was really good. The Wild West theme was brilliant, and there was a bit where underneath the bridge they actually had like dynamite underneath to say that it's like actually exploding. Yeah, it did. And then some like Indian uh, teepees, teepee tents, and stuff like that. Cowboys versus Indians and all that. It was right on theme. Yeah, which is really good. Uh, obviously, very similar to the Valhalla boats. Very similar. It has a backward drop you mentioned. I did the original Valhalla before it's got uh, redone. Uh, had a backwards drop, um, but I actually like the new Valhalla. It works really well. You it get really soaked does. on there too. And this is definitely a soaker. 
Yeah. When you've got more people in your boat. <laughs> Even when you don't, the backwards drop and the first drop both wet you, but the final drop really does sodden your pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back onto Superman, we've got a 10 minute wait, and this time we're gonna actually film ourselves in this bad boy. Well, we decided to get some food after riding Superman for the last time in Parque Warner. We headed into the Daily Planet, which is quite fitting. I went with this ham and cheese pizza things. It looks quite decent again. Should be branching out, but the only places are open now at this time. And Sarah got a ham and cheese toasty because she wasn't really feeling anything else. And of course, some fries and a full sugar cup. What else can we want? Have this. Oh yeah, commemorative cup, which we're gonna try and obviously buy and get back with us in a limited space. But what else can you want? And of course, we're going to try and get on Batman and Gotham City Escape two more times before we leave, which will be a brilliant end to the trip. to get one ride right at the end of Gotham City Escape. Quite late, it was still a night ride technically wasn't it overall. Yeah, it's kind of a night-ish. Night-ish ride, night-ish ride. But uh, one thing that we didn't manage to get on so far is the last Gotham City Escape because it's currently stuck on the turnstile yep. down there. We've been waiting about 45 minutes in here. Enough people have left now so it's only us left for one full train. Full train yeah. We wanted the front row, we just had the front row, so we wanted it again. But we've just planted ourselves in the back row for the uh, the air gates, just to guarantee if it does run, we've got a seat, a decent seat. But we don't know if it is because the turntable is currently stuck. The turntable is completely stuck. It's not moving at all. Um, the train is on there, but it's not moving. And engineers be back and forth, and they're still playing music, so they're still trying. But enough people have left now, so it would be three trains. It's now one train. So fingers crossed we'll get on it again. Hopefully. Otherwise, we've got the last ride on the front row, which is still better than nothing. One eternity later. Well, almost after an hour and a half of waiting in the queue, uh, they kicked us out, basically. Uh, they weren't able to get the ride started, unfortunately. We're a bit disappointed, obviously, because it's our last day here. It and is. And our last chance to go on it, but... Uh, all we can say is our last, technically our last ride there was on the front row, which is our favourite point, so we're happy about that. Yeah, we still got a night ride about 8pm and we just literally got on the front row, perfect ride, beautiful. We decided to rush back on, but at 8.10pm in the ride, we were literally three trains from getting on and it broke down and they kicked us out at 20 to 10 essentially yeah, like, the, yeah the staff really tried to get it going the turntable just wouldn't work they, at one point they were actually dragging the train back onto it which was actually interesting to look at but yeah because it really does seem like the problem with gotham city escape no matter how amazing it is it's a really finicky coaster and it does break down a lot and it must be down to that turntable because it just always breaks yeah because over the two days we've been here it's broken down what like six seven eight Easy. times maybe? at least that we noticed it yeah, broke exactly. down day before apparently as well so this is an ongoing thing but uh, yeah, it's just one of those things you're going to have to iron out. Turntables seem to be a really big problem with these. Yeah, exactly. But, but they also could actually see in the process of them actually getting underneath the track and trying to fix it. We tried filming a bit of it, but then there's always no cameras. Someone else tried filming after us, yeah. and then they got angry and then told us all to get back out of the air gates and get back into the queue line because they didn't want to see in the inner workings. But Exactly. And then we thought they were going to kick us out earlier, and they didn't, but they were obviously still trying to get it sorted. But hopefully we'll be back in the future to ride it again. Yeah, we, we can always come back for a single day. It'd be a tiring day, but we could just fly here, come here, 
do the park, Uber back to the airport and get back. But regardless of the problems, it was still a really fun two days at the park. It was. And it was a great experience. It's a great experience. So we're definitely going to hit it back. But next time, we've actually got to go back to our home park, which is Oakland Towers. Which is great. Get on uh, Nemesis. Nemesis Reborn. Yeah. You, now you've always never been on Nemesis Reborn. I've never been on Nemesis period. I've never been on the sister Nemesis Inferno, so it's the first time for me. <laughs> so it'll be quite interesting to see my reaction, I imagine. Exactly. Especially since I loved Shadows of Arkham so much. I've already trashed Nemesis Inferno completely out of the exactly. water. Exactly, so it'll be interesting to see what you think of it. It will. Yeah. And with that, it's goodbye to Parquet One in Madrid. And as always, be like a barra. And keep coasting. <laughs>